Today we'll be discussing about the introducing and conclusion of the speech. So I'll be sharing with you the five purposes of the introduction. And the first slide will be uh, gaining the audience's attention. So stating an interest, interesting topic for the audience, uh, surprising them, catch their imagination, like something they like, it sparkles in their eyes. And explain why is it inspiring to them. Maybe they, they have some relation to it, uh, somebody that they know perhaps. And it can be also anything, it can be a history, story, love, sad, thriller, anything. And also you can display images to show them what it is about or what it entails. So, give the audience a reason to listen. Now enable them to let them learn something new, maybe they have never heard of, a document, a new discovery perhaps, something that they have never seen before. Now it's very important to think more and realize so that we have an open mind. The benefits, uh, it can help them one day so that they can teach others, uh, maybe improve themselves. And make sure to be a center of attention. You're lecturing about this, the introduction to become like a professor or a teacher. Next. Now, this slide now introduces the subject. The subject itself now, what it has to entail of maybe be a person, place, or a thing. Anything what the subject when we talk about in a poem or story. The subject purposes could be joyful, vengeful, a thriller, dark, secretive, and it also has to say about when, where, how, and when it happened. Right. Now establish your credibility, how you organize your work from the sequels, and dedication of course, and how you went in depth in your research. Find every information without plagiarizing, be sure you paraphrase. And be well prepared, know your material by heart, huh? so that you can go over and over. And be sure to believe in yourself, have that confidence that you know that your work is going to be awesome. Now, preview your five main points, huh? such as anything like it relates to the subject, huh? understanding the importance, huh? of course. Huh? Now, be sure that you have to keep in mind uh, such quotes, maybe be a clue, such an idea, and be sure. Yeah, in the sentence, it can be comprehending to something maybe closely related or states an idea. Right. And now we're going to move on to Rachel on her slide, the purposes of conclusion. So I will do, be doing the purposes of conclusions. An introduction creates a good first impression, whereas a conclusion leaves a good final impression. Summarizing the speech. Re-emphasizing the central idea is a good way to end your speech. It is your last chance to remind your audience what, you, what your central idea is. For example, if your speech is on texting and driving, you can start your conclusion by saying, texting and driving is very dangerous to you and to those around you. Another way to end your speech is to restate your main points. Going back to the speech on texting and driving, you can review the points that you covered in your speech, such as why texting and driving is dangerous, how it affects others, and what you can do to stop it. You can restate the main points in the beginning of the conclusion or as a transition between your body and your conclusion. Providing closure. To provide closure, you must cue the end of your speech. You can do this with verbal cues and nonverbal cues. Verbal cues include transition words and phrases such as finally, for my last point, and in conclusion. When using in conclusion, be aware that to many teachers it is a pet peeve. Some non-verbal cues include pausing, which allows the audience to take in what you say, slowing your speaking rate, moving out from behind the podium, and following vocal inflection. At the end of your speech, it is a good idea to motivate your audience to take some, some sort of action. Examples would be writing a letter, buying a product, or even joining an organization. The audience is more likely to respond if they are more personally involved.
Now Simone and I are going to be speaking about the 10 effective methods of introducing and concluding a speech, as well as two additional methods of concluding a speech. I'm going to be speaking about the first six methods of introducing and concluding a speech, which are illustrations and anecdotes, facts and statistics, quotations, humor, questions, and references to historical events. Illustrations and anecdotes are both very effective methods of introducing and concluding speech. They are the most inherently interesting methods because they appeal to the audience's curiosity. It reels them in by causing them to want to know how the story ends. You can use facts and statistics when introducing or concluding your speech. By using facts and statistics, it makes your topic more clearly or obviously significant to your audience. This motivates the audience to listen, and it helps them remember details. You can use quotations in introducing and concluding your speech. You can use quotations that are authoritative. For instance, you might want to quote an expert of the topic of your speech when you're speaking. This gives your audience an impression of your credibility. Also, you can use quotes that are more comprehensive or more memorable than what you have to say. Don't be afraid to take someone else's words, quoted of course, when speaking. Now, if you're a funny guy, you can use humor in introducing and concluding your speech. By using humor, you can relax your audience, you can ease them, and overall you can win their goodwill. Humor doesn't always have to be slapstick, like the Three Stooges or Dumb and Dumber. It can also be ironic humor or incredulous humor. Note, though, that it is not always appropriate to be using humor. You don't want to be the guy cracking jokes while giving a speech on a rape or abortion. That's a no-no. The next effective method of introducing and concluding a speech is using questions. Be mindful when using questions. Don't ask questions that don't advance your point or pertain to your topic. You should ask thoughtful rhetorical questions that prompt thoughts and mental participation in your audience. And the last of these six methods is reference to historical events. You can make a reference to a historical event in introducing and concluding your speech. You can relate. Uh, every day in history is the anniversary of some event in history. You can relate that event in history to your speech, which is very effective because it makes it, your speech more memorable. You can find out what events happened on any specific day by going to thisdayinhistory.com. Now Simone is going to be speaking about the last four effective methods of introducing and concluding a speech, as well as the an additional two methods of concluding a speech. <clears throat> your introduction is used to grab the listener's attention. Give preview of your speech, introduce a topic, and establish your credibility. Needless to say, writing your intro may seem like a tedious job, but with a little practice and some methods I'll use may help you write an adequate attention grabber. Not every method I'll use today will help you with your particular speech, but with a little practice and some critical thinking, you'll find the one that will work for you. As if writing your first impression when writing your intro isn't hard enough, you have to find a way to bore your audience with the right conclusion. Methods such as referring to recent events, personal references, references to the occasion, references to preceding speeches, 
and inspirational appeals or challenges may help you with your particular speech. Unfortunately, people will strive as hard in their conclusion as they do with their intros, leaving the audience with an unsatisfactory impression of their speech. Fortunately, methods used in your intros may help you with your conclusions. Firstly, we will reference to recent events. Reference to, re to recent events, if the topic is timely, it's a good idea to mention something that's recent. For example, if talking about school violence, you might want to mention what happened in March 31st, 2015 at Killian High School, where an African-American female stabbed an African-American male. You can mention recent events in the form of in an illustration, a statistic, or a quotation. For example, a statistic is a number that people use to describe something. So if you're talking about current STD rates, you can say that people with AIDS are 31% more of having a chance to get contract the disease if they're gay or lesbian. This also increases your credibility. You could also reference to personal experiences. Referring to personal experiences can establish a bond with you and your audience, making the speech more memorable for some. Show appreciation or pleasure at being able to speak, which is one of the methods. Such as if you're speaking at a graduation, you can say, it's a pleasure to be here. You can share personal experiences by saying, if you're part of a violent school attack, you could show how you're a victim of one. Or if you're about a car accident, you could explain your experience. Reference to an occasion is what I mentioned earlier, where you could say, I'm happy to be here at a graduation. If those two particular methods do not work, you can mention references to an occasion or etc. <clears throat> this will help you when thinking on your toes. It's most commonly used at weddings, birthday, dedication ceremonies, etc. It can come it can be combined with illustration or asking a rhetorical question. <clears throat> Lastly but not least, references to the preceding speeches. If another speaker mentions something in your speech, you won't know until moments before you actually speak. So referencing back to that person's speech may help you when thinking on your toes. Last but not least, the next method which is using an inspirational or challenging message is mostly used in conclusions, but it could also help you in the intro with grabbing the reader's attention, the listener's attention. It rouses the audience in an emotional pitch, making the conclusion the climax. Writing, spe writing speeches is hard, so these, these methods may be useful to you. To recall, recurring to a current situation in time when your speech is timely, personal life experiences, referencing to an occasion, to a preceding speech, and ending with an inspirational quote or challenge. No matter what you choose, practice is always perfect. 